So section 5.4 is discrete random variables. So discrete, we might not remember that. Those are um, variables that had those gaps, right? Numerical with gaps. Um, random has to do with chance and variables are things that change. So a random variable is any numerical quantity. Sometimes I abbreviate RV just to write less. It's any numerical quantity whose value depends on chance. So it's really similar to algebra um, variables. It's just based on chance. Um, a discrete random variable is what we're going to look at in this section. And these are specifically um, random variables that have discrete, that are discrete. So things that are like whole numbers usually. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this thing called a probability distribution, which will be a list of the variable together with their probabilities. So it's kind of like a frequency table, but we're going to do probabilities instead. And then the sum of the probabilities will add up to 1. That symbol means sum. That says P of x, sum of probabilities. Right. It should make sense. All the chances should add up to, all the possibilities should add up to 100%. So let's look at an example. So we have stat students who own cars. We have 65 of them. They were asked how many times they personally opened the hood of their car. So that's a variable. And you'll see that in the first row, my variable. It's discrete, right? Because you can't open like one and a half times, right? You either open it once or twice. And then we wrote the frequency. So this is a sideways frequency table. So there were 30 students who opened it zero times, six students who opened it one time, and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to probabilities now. So my variable is, we'll call it x, um, and it's the number of times they open their hood. So what are the possible values for x? Um, so that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up through 7. Right, this is discrete, there are gaps. And so if we wanted to um, use random variable notation, um, we're just going to use a variable for number of opens. So we want to do the event that a student opened their hood two times. So we're using x for the variable, and it open two times would be equal to two. So we're just kind of abbreviating now. That's all random variable notation is, an abbreviation. So let's find the probability that they open the hood two times. That's what this says right here. So how many total students were there? 65. How many of them opened two times? 15. Open two times out of the total. And if we do 15 divided by 65, we get 0 0.2308. It's very, very similar to relative frequency. It almost, it basically is the same thing. Um, so let's make a, a probability distribution. So it's gonna look just like a frequency table. So we'll put our variables, and then rather than putting frequency or relative frequency, we're gonna put probability. But otherwise it's the same table. Um, I'm gonna abbreviate it. Instead of probability, I'm just gonna write P of X to abbreviate it. And we already found 2, 0 0.2308. So we're just putting the variable in the first column and the probability in the second column. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So I'm just going to move the table a little bit closer so we can watch it. So we're just going to find all the probabilities now. So we all of them, we're just going to do Frequency divided by total. So for zero, it will be 30 over 65. 0.4615. All right, so then for one, right, we do six out of 65. This should feel familiar. We're giving it a new name, but we did this when we did relative frequency. 0923. Um, two, we already did. That was 15 out of 65, and we'll just keep going. So then for 3, we'll do 5 out of 65. 
right? Notice I'm doing the frequency, not the number. So three has nothing to do with probability. Five students open three times out of 65. So 0769. Um, for four, we get two out of 65. So two students out of the 65, 0308. Um, for five and six, they're actually both three out of 65. So I'm gonna save myself the trouble and only do it once. Just write the same number twice, 0462. And then the final one will be one out of 65 for seven, which is 0154. And then for those of you who like to check our work, um, I like to add them up and see if they add up to one. Calculator disappeared. You can add them up. So I'm just gonna add up all of these. So 4615 plus 0923. So go ahead and add them and we get hopefully one or at least very close to one. I got 1.0001, which is close enough, right? We rounded, so sometimes things get messed up. And this is what a probability distribution is. It's just a table showing all the possible probabilities. So let's go ahead and convert that to a graph. So um, the histogram is going to look just like a frequency histogram, except instead of doing frequency, we do probability. The bottom will still be the variable, which is number of opens. So all of this is stuff we have done. Um, and I'm going to space it out. I think there's room to do every other. We'll see. In a second. Yeah, there is. I just went one too far over. So zero, one, two... Remember, we're labeling the center, so I'll show you when we get there. Uh, but before we do that, let's figure out our vertical scale, and then I'll remind you how this works. So we haven't done this for a while, um, but our vertical scale is we're going to take the largest probability. Um, so the largest one is the largest one here. I see 4615 as my largest, the max. And then if you're doing this at home and you don't have paper, I would do about 10 boxes. I have 11 on this one, so 11 boxes. So if you're following along, just do 11 boxes, but around 10 boxes is usually a good choice. So 4615 divided by 11, we get 0.04, one, 0.042, let's round that up to 0.05. That would be easy to count by. So 0.05, 10, go ahead and label. I know I label pretty fast, so just pause the video while you label and then check that we have the same thing. So then come back once you're done labeling and we'll start sketching the graph. Uh, let's do, I don't know, purple. So then zero is the center of the bar. So we're not doing this. Um, the zero needs to be in the center. So zero goes all the way up to four, six. So we go up to four, six. And notice I have zero in the center. And then one goes up to 09, that's slightly under 010, right? My bars are touching, but again, the numbers are centered. So that's really important. And then keep going and we'll see what we get. 2 is going to go up to 2, 3, so that's slightly over 20. We're just estimating. Notice all my bars are the same width, and the numbers are in the center. 0, 7 for 3. Um, 4 is pretty small. It's going to be hard but to squeeze in. Um, 5 and 6 are just slightly bigger than 4. Oops, just a little hard to draw, but we're just estimating. We're doing the best we can. All right, and then seven's gonna be really hard because it's really tiny, but right there. And that's my graph. It looks just like our frequency histograms, right? Um, we're just telling the reader it's probability instead. So what's the chance of opening zero times? What's the chance of opening one time? Cool. 
So I'll see you back for example two in the next video.